When we first met Dom and company, they were merely street racers. Now, thanks to years of facing increasingly high-profile villains, they have literally saved the world multiple times. From forgettable crime lords to incredible super soldiers, here are the Fast and Furious villains ranked from worst to best. After the first movie, Brian O'Connor went on the run to Miami where he quickly made a name for himself in the local racing scene and reconnected with his childhood friend, Roman Pierce. Together, they worked with the U.S. Customs Agency to take down a serious drug operation run by a man named Carter Verone, who's played by Cole Hauser. And while well, the villain of Too Fast, Too Furious isn't exactly a top-tier bad guy, not only is his fake Argentinian accent awful, but Verone is relatively small potatoes as far as crime bosses go. Sure, he's got henchmen and a lot of property, but at the end of the day, he's just a rich Miami jerk with a dirty cop or two in his pocket. Throughout the movie, his only real leverage over Brian and Roman is that he continues to threaten undercover agent Monica Fuentes, who's playing the helpless girlfriend and putting up with his abuse in the hopes of a large arrest. When the time comes, all it takes is a good car crash and a bullet to the shoulder to bring the crime boss down for good. Despite the hype brought on by bringing back the original cast for 2009's Fast and Furious, audiences ended up settling for another subpar villain, Phoenix Calderon. The character is introduced as Arturo Braga's number one henchman and best drug runner. He's established pretty early on as an antagonist when it's revealed that he killed Letty and has every intention of killing Brian and Dom. What makes him one of the lower entries on this list is that he fails at literally every job he has in the movie. First of all, it's revealed in Fast and Furious 6 that after running Letty off the road and having her at Barrel's End, he decides to get fancy and shoot the gas tank rather than execute her outright. She lives. Later in the fourth movie, he's tasked with killing the people who helped him run drugs under the U.S. and Mexico border. That team includes Brian and Dom. Surprise, he fails at that too. After a climactic chase through underground tunnels, he does manage to wipe O'Connor's car and is about to execute him when... You guessed it, he fails. Dom crashes into him, ending his reign of criminal mediocrity for good. Fast and Furious Tokyo Drift is a strange installment in the franchise. In addition to being the lowest grossing film of the series, it's the single biggest headache for the timeline of the Fast and Furious movies, thanks to the death of Han Solo, who appears in the next three movies. On top of all that, when it comes to villains, it's got one of the lower rungs on the totem pole with Takashi, the self-proclaimed Drift King of Tokyo. When young hotshot Sean Boswell makes his way to the city looking to break into the racing scene, he gets a face full of humiliation from Takashi before finding himself entangled in a web that includes the villain's Yakuza boss uncle. In the end, the duo agree to a drift race, with the loser being forced out of Tokyo for good. If that feels a little low stakes for a franchise that includes our heroes running away from a nuclear submarine, that's because it is. At the end of the day, Takashi is just a rich kid with great family connections and some driving acumen. Reyes has the distinguished honor of being one of the many villains in Fast Five, a film that marks the franchise's departure from the realm of dated street racing movies and into the realm of the stunt-based action genre. Freeze! Reyes is another generic South American crime boss who orders other people to do his bidding and, of course, fails to do anything to scare Dom's team. Granted, he's the reason that the disjointed characters from the four previous movies are forced to get together in one setting, but Reyes himself is not a fighter, a driver, or a particularly clever person. In fact, most of the movie is spent seeing Dom and his gang straight up threatening him just so they are able to more easily steal his stockpile of cash. While actor Joaquin de Almeida does a great job portraying the crime boss, once the chips are down and there are no more people or dirty cops for him to order around, he's a relatively toothless being who crumbles like a Jenga tower when he's finally faced with the full brunt of the team. Kiet, played perfectly by Tony Jaa in Fast and Furious 7, is by far one of the more interesting antagonists of the franchise. Another actor who deserves a lot of credit is the late Paul Walker, who clearly worked hard on his stage combat training in order to look every bit the match for the incomparable Jaa in the movie. The character is first introduced when Dom's team is intercepting the convoy carrying Ramsey as a prisoner. Brian manages to get on board the bus, and he and Kiet engage in an advanced martial arts fight that's only interrupted when the vehicle falls on its side. Kiet manages to lock Brian inside as it's headed off a cliff, but our boy survives. 
they encounter each other again at the climax of the movie where they engage in yet another high-speed fight. This time, however, Brian manages to get a clever edge over his opponent and send him down an elevator shaft to his apparent doom. In a world where Dominic Toretto is constantly portrayed as a step ahead of literally everyone he comes across, it takes a lot to successfully pull a fast one on him and the team. However, Riley Hicks manages to do just that in a shocking twist that takes place in Fast and Furious 6. When the movie opens, DSS agent Lucas Hobbs is hot on the trail of Owen Shaw. However, he knows that he needs to bring Dom's team in to successfully apprehend him. Things immediately go south, and it becomes clear that Shaw wasn't only prepared for Hobbs and Toretto's plan, he was actually expecting it. It turns out that Agent Hicks, who was a top performer in the DSS, was working with Shaw the whole time. Not only that, but the two seem to be romantically involved as well, which comes as a surprise to Letty, who kinda has a thing with Shaw herself, it seems. That's why it's not surprising that when Letty and Riley encounter each other in the field, they have one of the better fistfights of the franchise, helped in large part by the fact that actress Gina Carano is a former real-life women's MMA fighter. Although she meets her end later in the movie, she leaves a distinct mark on the franchise by helping Shaw prepare for a new class of hero, by staying a step ahead of them for the better part of the sixth installment in the franchise. In the hierarchy of threats to Dominic Toretto and his gang, Johnny Tran is by far the lowest on the list. However, he ranks higher than some villains in part because he has the distinguished honor of being the first Fast and Furious antagonist. Tran is the leader of a gang in Los Angeles that deals in high-end electronics for cars. He and Dom previously had a relationship, but they agreed to a territory truce after Dom slept with Tran's sister. As a result, each feared the other while in their respective territory. However, while Dom just wanted to race cars and pull off the occasional DVD heist, Tran had an ever-growing operation that got the attention of the FBI. Unfortunately, he crossed the wrong team at Race Wars when Dom's friend Jesse raced him for pink slips. Jesse runs after losing the race, and Tran goes off on Dom on neutral territory, inviting a vicious beating upon his face. Tran responds by showing up to Toretto's house and murdering Jesse and taking a shot at not only Dom, but his sister Mia as well. The ensuing chase results in Tran's death and solidifies the tense relationship between Dom and Brian forever. In short, no, Tran isn't one of the worst threats that Toretto has faced. However, when they did cross paths, they were equals, and his death put Dom and Brian on an entirely new criminal level. Arturo Braga has the rare distinction of being the only villain in the movies so far to return and not be considered an active member of the good guys team. He's introduced in Fast and Furious as a longtime heroin smuggler whose cartel in Mexico has expanded well into Los Angeles. He's first seen by Brian and Dom when the duo are forced to race each other in order to gain entry onto his team of drivers. He's the man that pulls Phoenix Calderon's strings and he's therefore responsible for all the hurt that Letty's apparent death causes. Especially me. However, his reach extends further than that. While he's not the strongest or most talented villain, he's by far the largest crime boss that the gang had come up against at that time. His operation is far-reaching. Driving alone can't stop him, and it forces the good guys to join forces with the law and order to take him down. In short, Braga may not be the most captivating villain, but he's an important chess piece on the board in terms of raising the stakes and making sure these characters don't stay battling street-level tough guys forever. While Deckard Shaw was far and away the main villain of Furious 7, it's actually Mose Zakande that causes the team so much grief in the film. Born in Nigeria, Zakande is a mercenary and warlord who's determined to bring his little private army into the forefront of world dominance through use of the God's Eye, a device that allows the user to hack and use any piece of technology in a given area. Hoping to capture this terrifying tech, Zakande kidnaps Ramsey in an attempt to force her to give him the device. Worse still, he almost kills Toretto when our hero tries to rescue the computer hacker, forcing Dom to literally drive off a cliff rather than face the slew of bullets Shikande plans to send his way. The character becomes a further thorn in the team's side when he allies himself with Deckard after realizing that they have a shared interest in stopping Dom's team. However, he makes the grave tactical error of turning on Deckard once he's outlived his usefulness during their climactic battle in Los Angeles. Once Zakande has the god's eye and control over it, he decides to try and kill both Deckard and Dom, which obviously doesn't work out in his favor. While he may not have had a ton of screen time, he looms large over the seventh movie. 
The Fast and the Furious movies have a lot of unnamed or downright useless henchmen characters. Standing out amongst these nobodies with ease, Connor Rhodes is perhaps the most influential sidekick in the entire franchise. He's incredibly loyal to the villainous Cypher. He's one of the men responsible for blackmailing Toretto by kidnapping Alina, and he's even the trigger man when the time comes to execute her just to prove a point to Dom. Not only is actor Christopher Hivyu a physical match for the ever-imposing Vin Diesel, but his character proves a proper foil for him in a movie where the lines of good and evil are blurred. While Dom is a reluctant participant in Cypher's villainy, Kana approaches his often heinous tasks with glee. He even attempts to kill Letty more than once in the movie finally sparking Dom's rage. Unfortunately, once his blackmail leverage over Dom goes out the window, he's no match for an infuriated good guy, and he gets his neck snapped right on the hood of Dom's car. After squaring off against MMA fighter Gina Carano in Fast and Furious 6, Michelle Rodriguez Letty got a sort of title shot in Furious 7 against none other than UFC superstar Ronda Rousey, who played Abu Dhabi-based bodyguard Kara. When Letty has to infiltrate her prince's penthouse, she's spotted by the head of security, the aforementioned Kara. Realizing something is up, Kara pursues Letty to an off-limits area of the party and has three female guards attack her. Once the three guards are dispatched, it's a one-on-one -on -one fight between Letty and Kara that's one of the more vicious and brutal in the franchise. The fight ends in a bit of a draw, with the girls tumbling over a banister onto a DJ setup, where Letty is able to make a quick escape from the party. Unfortunately, that's all of the character that fans get from the movie, but the fight scene itself made up a lot of the marketing for the seventh installment in the franchise. It was so intensive that Rodriguez later admitted to actually sustaining injuries while filming. After years of increasingly scary villains putting the team in increasingly intense situations, the Toretto family finds their way to international acclaim when they are asked by the American government to help bust a team of similarly trained thieves with a penchant for, quote, vehicular warfare. The antagonists are led by Owen Shaw, a former SAS operative who spent the last few years as a mercenary. He's revealed to have been the one pulling Arturo Braga's strings, showing him how to think of his operation more globally than locally. In many ways, Owen represents everything that Dominic and his crew have been preparing for their whole lives. His team is essentially a mirror version of Dom's, and his ultimate goal is to create something that could literally destroy the world. Owen hits them not only on a personal level, but a professional one as well, making him far and away their toughest villain at this point in the series. He would likely be higher on the list if he didn't return in The Fate of the Furious as an ally to the very man who put him in a coma. If Owen Shaw deserves top marks for having Braga in his pocket, Cypher edges him out on the list because she actually had Owen in hers. Played by the inimitable Charlize Theron, she's revealed in The Fate of the Furious as an expert hacker who successfully managed to convince the world that she's not actually a person, but a hacking collective. She uses her skills to move both people and governments around like chess pieces in order to secure herself some massive power, such as the use of the God's Eye and a Nightshade device. Did you all enjoy that? Next generation concussion grenade. It scrambles your senses. In addition, similar to Owen, she manages to hit Dominic really close to home by kidnapping his ex-girlfriend, Alina Neves, and the son he didn't know they had together. However, unlike Shaw, who failed to kill both Letty and Mia, Cypher successfully executes Alina just to prove a point. Unlike many of the other villains that dared across Toretto's path, she manages to escape without suffering serious bodily harm. And as the series is still ongoing, it looks like Cypher is set to pose even more problems for our heroes going forward. A lot of people on this list have been given bad marks for joining up with Dom and his crew after spending an entire movie trying to end their lives in deeply personal ways. While normally it's the mark of a bad villain to become a somewhat morally questionable good guy in the end, it works for Deckard Shaw thanks to the incomparable charm of Jason Statham. Deckard is first introduced at the end of Fast and Furious 6, when it's revealed that the accident that killed Han was no accident at all. It was a targeted hit designed to place a shot across the bow of Dom's family for what they did to Shaw's little brother, Owen. He then spends Furious 7 on a relentless mission to finally give Dom a run for his money as the film's core villain. Unfortunately, he's defeated in a car park fistfight by Dom. It's revealed in subsequent movies, though, that Shaw's reputation as a murderer who betrayed his country was a false narrative created by his enemies. Although he's quite the badass, he has a code that he lives by. 
prior to joining up as a reluctant ally in the fate of the Furious, he was a mercenary for hire who only took missions that would allow him to sleep at night. In other words, he's a complicated villain in a franchise filled with some typical point-and-click baddies. Although his recruitment in Dom's family is a little unorthodox, the films go out of their way to explain that he belongs, and his charisma led to the first spin-off movie, Hobbs and Shaw, that left very few fans complaining. Prior to the spin-off Hobbs and Shaw, Precious Little was known about Deckard other than he was a well-trained mercenary who you really didn't want to cross. Although his change from villain to hero is pretty much completed in The Fate of the Furious, his involvement with a man named Brixton Law solidified his role as a good guy. Brixton was an MI6 alongside Shaw early on in their respective careers. However, Deckard didn't share Brixton's apathy for human life and therefore put a bullet in his head. What he didn't know was that Brixton survived the assassination attempt and was given mechanical and biological enhancements by a nefarious organization known as Etion that turned him into an actual super soldier. All the other additions to this list are villains in their own right, but Brixton's status as a literal supervillain makes him far and away the worst threat anyone involved with the team has ever had to encounter. Even his motivations stand head and shoulders above his competition. Owen Shaw, for example, wanted to unleash a weapon on the world, but he did it for personal gain. Brixton, however, has fully bought into Etion's company line about enhancing the human race and making people evolve into the next stage of existence. He even gets particularly cross with Hattie Shaw when she suggests that he's merely a profit-based killer. In short, for a franchise that got its start with street-level villains causing the occasional drive-by over turf wars, an Avengers-level supervillain is hard to compete with. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more Looper videos about the Fast and the Furious franchise are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.